Hey everyone, Mark here. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the brand new Amazon DevOps Guru. It's available in preview now. It should already be accessible in your AWS management console. This is the first time I've taken a look at it, so we're probably in for some surprises, but this is an exciting new service that uses a machine learning model to try to predict operational challenges that you may run into down the road. So the idea is, is that Amazon DevOps Guru will highlight an issue, you can do something about it before it actually happens. If this works as expected, this could be a phenomenal tool for teams that are building in the AWS cloud. It really will help reduce that operational burden, which is a huge part of one of the five AWS well-architected pillars. Of course, we're talking about operational excellence. Let's dive in and take a look now. So here I've already logged into my AWS account. DevOps Guru is not available through uh, the services search. So if we try that right now, it's not actually showing up. Just Code Guru is showing up. So you have to actually go through the direct link. And of course, I'll put that uh, below in the video or in the tweet, wherever you stumble across this, there'll be a direct link in there. Um, but we have the standard landing page here. We have the uh, explanation, high level one point. Uh, this is Amazon DevOps Guru. It's available in preview. It's an ML powered cloud operation service to improve application availability. If you keep scrolling down, we can see the pricing tier. So it's a free tier for three months is uh, 7,200 calls per month for resource analysis. And 10,000 calls to the API. We'll look at the pricing a little bit more in depth, um, but we get this quick little how it works. And I always like these, it's very, very simple. Select the coverage, so select the cloud formation stack or the AWS account, look at the data sources. Um, those are all gonna get ingested into Amazon DevOps Guru. There it's gonna look at metrics, related events, recommendations in this data enrichment phase, and then has some integration. So into System Manager Ops Center, SNS, or third-party management uh, incident tools. So I would love to see event bridge here, but of course we can push SNS to event bridge, but it would be nice to be a first tier citizen instead of a second. Uh, but nonetheless, um, this is a really flexible service. Basically, basically we're going to point it at something. It's going to vacuum in a ton of data and then give us a result. That is an excellent setup. So features and benefits, automatically detect operational issues, resolve issues quickly, um, scale and maintain availability, reduce noise and alarm fatigue. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest um, advantages to this service that it's going to filter through the uh, alerts that you're seeing to give you quality. It's going to get rid of a lot of that noise and just bubble up that signal. Let's click on that big orange button and get started. So again, we get this quick explanation. We specify uh, how it works, we specify resources, it's gonna use machine learning, and then implement the insights. So we have to give it a role. Um, by default, it's gonna create a role. We can look at that policy. Um, and of course, as we would expect, it's granting itself a ton of permissions to different services, um, all read only, to get the um, important information that it needs. Um, and then it's gonna allow uh, events to be written, which is great. It's uh, going to be uh, allowing uh, to create a system manager, um, system center manager ops item for response and get updates to those, that's all fine. So this is a great tight least permissions policy, really like that. Um, and then uh, there is the role um, to pronounce, um, Sorry, uh, this is the additional, oh, this is just the clear explanation of it. Essentially, it tells you what we just walked through looking at the JSON. You can tell I'm an old school nerd. I'm just gonna look at the raw source rather than the nice clear explanation, but this is a great uh, explanation in plain text just telling you what services it's gonna access. I like when uh, permissions are set up clearly like that. It makes it far easier to understand what you're doing instead of just clicking along. We're all gonna click anyway, but it's great to actually know and review the permissions before you do that. So what do we want to do? Do we want to analyze all the resources in the current account or do we want to choose later? So that would allow us, if we click choose later, um, to pick a cloud formation stack down the road. This is a demo account. I've got some stuff running in here, but nothing crazy. So we're just going to say analyze everything. Um, and then I could add an SNS topic. This is going to allow me to actually push out uh, the um, insights from DevOps Guru to do what I want with. So I'm actually going to create this right now. I'm going to create a new SNS topic, which is fantastic. Um, DevOps Guru guru insights um, and that will create that which is fantastic and i'm going to just click enable 
So here we're now switched to the initial collection phase and you can see that in the top bar we've got uh, Amazon DevOps Guru is in the process of collecting and analyzing my data. Now that's going to take a little bit of time. I'm not sure how long is the first time I've done this too. Absolutely. So as DevOps Guru is scanning our data, we get our first insight into how we're going to actually use this service and it comes in the dashboard. You can see here the system health summary uh, gives us four major things. The metrics it's analyzed in the last hour, that's just a good thing to know that it's continuing to look. Impact stacks that's tied directly to our cloud formation stacks um, but more importantly these last two ongoing reactive and ongoing proactive insights this means that devops guru is actually going to continue to highlight issues that have happened and um, not just try to predict things so if something does happen it's going to bubble that up for us as well um, which is really really important because it's not just a like oh no hey i told you once and you never did anything about it it's actually going to give you that continued uh, continued usage which is great uh, so we're just waiting Okay, it's been more than a hot minute, as you can probably tell, because the framing's probably changed. Um, it took a long time for the Amazon DevOps Guru preview to analyze my account, but it's finished. And it's actually generated uh, 234 metrics in the last hour. Now, I turned off the um, forced error that I pushed into my serverless stack, because while I was analyzing the data, I actually needed that app Back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that back to be forcing errors. I'm, I'm putting the timeout down to one second, which is going to start to generate a ton of errors. We're going to see how fast it's picked up in Amazon DevOps Guru, the preview. Remember, previews often have some rough edges. They get smoothed out really, really quickly, and the teams are always on top of it. And this is probably the worst time possible, the day after it was publicly revealed, to be showing you this stuff. But I also think it's really interesting and important to kind of see what we're dealing with because this service has so much potential. Let's check it out as I force that error again now. So you can see from the graph within uh, the Lambda console gives you that little uh, preview of your CloudWatch metrics that earlier I had forced a ton of errors and now I'm starting to generate them again. Every minute this Lambda is executing as part of a serverless application. It was built in Cloud9 so there's all the great um, creation behind it so it is an official cloud formation stack um, and now we're going to be generating an error every minute it's going to invoke it's going to time out in one second because it has not completed and will fail thus generating the error we're going to see how fast the devops guru is going to pick that up and what kind of insights it's generating there i'm not so concerned with the speeds because this is a predictive thing so it's going to be looking at the different um, insights and trying to tell you before things happen um, and that always gets faster over time uh, but what i want to see is is it going to pick up this kind of error because it's an obvious challenge so let's see what the service is bubbling up uh, to tell us about this issue. Um, that happens in the form of an insight, in this case, a reactive insight, because this thing has already happened and continues to happen. Let's see what is available to us uh, in the service now. So if I click on ongoing reactive insights, um, but before I do that, you'll notice down below um, the name of our stack is highlighted in red with the warning sign uh, telling us that it's the cloud nine, what's new in the AWS cloud stack that's affected. So we click on this ongoing reactive insight. And it takes us over to the insights area of the service. Now we get this uh, a chart or this table, I should say, of reactive um, uh, insights. Thankfully, we only have one. It's a high severity and it is ongoing. I like that it flags that right away. So if we click through here, now we start to get the details of this high severity one. It says Lambda errors, anomalous in the stack, um, and it gives us the details. So the errors metric um, for Lambda function name breached a high threshold. I would say 100% is, is pretty high. So if we roll scroll down, it's going to give us the aggregated metrics. We can see now that uh, the errors sum, uh, it just started at uh, this time at 35 after the hour, and it's just straight on through. So we can actually click on graft um, and see how that looks. Now this is obvious and apparent. It highlights the graft uh, error, or the error area for us in this graph to show us the issue and it clearly identifies the resource um, that is impacted. That is an excellent, excellent insight. Now we can click for more details. Um, and then this just gives us some ways to uh, slice and dice this data a little bit. For this error, um, it's not really important because it's just a flat out happening, but for other errors, you'll be able to adjust how you view them. So if we come back to the main insight page, 
uh, we are going to see here um, it's an infrastructure uh, there are no relevant events which is nice this is not linked to something bigger um, and then it gives us recommendations and this is extremely clear how to troubleshoot errors and set up automatic retries in AWS Lambda now for a Lambda that is constantly failing this is exactly what you would want to see teaching us how to actually adjust this so, so let's go back into our stack and fix the problem that we created uh, and we'll see how Amazon DevOps uh, Guru Preview um, shows that this insight has actually been addressed and resolved. Okay, so after a little while of that Lambda running correctly, remember it executes every minute. So after a few um, successful uh, invocations, um, around 10 minutes or so, uh, Amazon DevOps Guru has successfully flagged that as a resolved issue. Let's take a look to see what that looks like when we look for the specific insight we were examining earlier. So you can see on our dashboard, it's uh, currently gone uh, to all zeros across the board for the reactive insights. Our affected stack is back to green. Um, and when we look, we have a total of two reactive insights in our history. Um, another one bubbled up while I was waiting for this one to finish. Um, but if we click on the insights on the left hand side, this will allow us to actually um, check and see the status is closed. The DynamoDB was actually related to this in my application. Um, but now if we click on the Lambda uh, errors uh, anomaly, we can see the status is closed and we still have those metrics saved so we can go back and look at the history of this insight and that's really really important because I believe that this service is going to use these previous insights to help predict before it happens again and that's really the core of this there's still a ton we don't know about how this service works but it's extremely promising I know there's been some mixed views uh, on this but overall I would say anything that can help generate insights that teams can action provide solid recommendations based on AWS's body of knowledge and your particular environment I think that's a huge huge win give it a try today it's available in your AWS account even though it doesn't show up in the management console search you can check the description down below for the link um, or check the blog post uh, introducing uh, Amazon DevOps guru preview um, to uh, enable it on your account and get started it's really simple to use even though there are still some rough edges but that's to be expected with a preview expect those to be resolved very very quickly and I think this is a service um, that you're gonna have to monitor for cost you're gonna have to maybe be a little more specific than just pointing it at your whole account. But I think in the end, it's going to save you a lot of headaches and it'll save you uh, time overall. Check it out. Let me know what you think.